sidecars are wonderful things. You can have old ones or new. Red, white and blue. Room for a little one. Or room for a few. But it's what you do with them that counts. You can take them off-road. To the seaside. Perhaps for a spot of speedway. In fact, you can take them wherever you like. Of course, 175 miles an hour on some of the world's fastest, most exciting tracks is also an option. The section of track here behind me at Germany's Nürburgring is due this year to be renamed the Schumacher S. The Germans obviously very proud of their motor racing history and they're seven times world champion. But what about Britain's answer to Germany's Michael Schumacher? Steve Webster has won the World Sidecar Championship no less than 10 times. Racing for 25 years and only recently retired, Steve has ridden a number of different passengers to victory. Paul Woodhead shared the last three titles with him and together they've helped to inspire many in the paddock. It's been a bit disappointing with Webbo going out though because I know you really wanted to beat him fair and square on the track. Yeah, it would have been nice for him to finish. I see he put a good time in but yeah, I think if, if he'd have been out there we would have pushed a bit harder and maybe stayed with him. So yeah, it would have been a good race. Shame really. Steve Webster has been a big influence uh, when I, certainly when I got to the World Championship level and I was lucky enough to be in the same team as Steve for a while and he's such a professional racer that uh, you can only learn good things from him. I had quite a lot of help from Paul Woodhead um, with sort of techniques and stuff, he, he's the world's best passenger without doubt. I was a late starter really, as I say, 91, so Webster was sort of uh, always my hero then and to get on the circuit and race against him, as I've done, it's been a big influence on me. Yeah, he's, he's been brilliant, he's been dominant and, uh, you know, what an amazing achievement and he should be recognised a lot more for what he's done. Steve has been awarded an MBE for his troubles, but he is not alone in flying the flag for Britain. Brothers Tim and Tristan Reeves are just the latest to add their names to a very impressive world championship list where in the last 20 years, 14 world title winners have been Brits. Here at the Autosport International show are some of the country's biggest motorsport fans, but what do they think of sidecar racing? Uh, I think they're a bit mad myself. Uh, it's a bit hairy, I'd have thought. I have watched a bit of it. It's a bit hair raising, it is. Um, it's not something, you don't see it often on TV enough, really, like, to get into it as much. What an experience. I mean, it's, it's uh, frightening, it's exciting, it's thrilling, it's quite incredible. A really amazing experience because I'm, I'm just fanatical about, you know, speed and that sort of thing. And what about the racing professionals? We went to find out if they would ever swap four wheels for three. All I know from watching videos and, you know, TV about sidecars is that the people that are in the actual sidecar itself must be absolutely mental. Absolute tycos, but there is, I, I suppose there is quite a lot of skill involved. Um, I grew up actually with bikes, and uh, it was more motocross and Isle of Man TT, and both of them in their time have had uh, quite a long sort of association with sidecar racing. But uh, it just seems to me a bit terrifying, to be honest, hanging on and trying to balance things. I def definitely wouldn't go as a passenger. I think those guys are, well, all I can say is extremely committed to do that. But uh, I'm a keen motorbike racing fan and uh, sidecars and all form of motorsport is very hard and anybody that's winning at that level is doing a great job. I remember watching those guys and it was on, it was on, it must have been on BBC in those days when I remember watching it. And every now and again you see it and it's great because it's great seeing the, sort of the way that they move them, what, themselves across the, 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 the car. Uh, if you want to call it a car, I don't know what you call it actually, but the sidecar part of it. And uh, yeah, no, it's good because it's, it's a very, very difficult way of driving uh, because I think you know the way the guy you, you know, you've got to, you're relying on someone else when, when I'm in a car I'm just relying on myself so that way it's uh, quite difficult at all. You got the opportunity now would you give it a go? Absolutely categorically no there is no way that I would do that I think the people that do it are extremely brave very very dedicated obviously but uh, as well, I, I don't know, I think four wheels is maybe just that little bit more stable. They say the Isle of Man is very stable because it's the three legs of man. Personally, I think it would be much more stable like an oil rig if it's got four. Well, it certainly makes sense. So why do these guys think three wheels are so much better? Because you can have a friend with you. <laughs> it's not so bad when you crash, you just fall off so much, you just slow down. Certainly the teamwork element, like. And once you've had a go on it, you can't let it go. It's very addictive. Good fun. What the fuck? I like that.
<laughs> yeah, three wheels are much better. Can't explain why, but in my opinion they are. Three wheels are best, obviously I'm biased, but you know, just the, the camaraderie between all the competitors, you've got two people on the bike, so you share the enjoyment of it. And uh, it's one less than four, so it's cheaper on tyres. I just love the eccentricity of it. You can take a perfectly good vehicle, take a wheel off it, and make it handle in a bizarre way, or take a perfectly good two-wheel vehicle and add a wheel to it, and make it handle in a totally bizarre way. Mm. It's good fun. <laughs> There's nothing like that really. The idea is you've, you've got a perfectly good sidecar and you either take a wheel away from it and make it look silly or add another wheel to it and make it, it boring. Yeah, it's, you know, There's only the three wheel thing and they don't fall over when you walk away from them. It's got to be the upshot. Camaraderie and family are a very important part to life in the sidecar paddock. Sorry dear. Whether it involves being nice to your opponents. If you need something, you go to the next neighbor and bring it to you. And uh, when you're together with the solos, they keep everything for themselves. Here we share everything. Family support at meetings is also a big help. Now, I've been over in the Isle of Man at the Manx Grand Prix. We've watched that before. I've been over to Mallory Park and down in Rugby in the Isle of Man. Or even jumping on a bike with your little brother. No, we can like talk to each other without talking if you like. There's, there is a, a connection there. You can almost anticipate sure. what each other's going to do next. Yeah. And I can boss him about because he's your man. This is the home of Gary and Dan Knight. Father and son, rider and passenger. But the family connection doesn't stop there, though. Grandad Eric began the tradition riding with his own father over 50 years ago. Between the three of us here, you know, exactly 100 years of it, racing experience. Back in the early 70s, um, my father was fairly adamant that I couldn't have a motorbike. Um, but anyway, one day I raided my post office savings account and went to Bull to BSA Bantam. Uh, much to my surprise, my dad wasn't angry at all. In fact, he got quite enthusiastic. He did buy a bike of his own violation, uh, which I promptly saw and rode around the lawn with him. So <laughs> I was back on bikes again. But we didn't go racing until Gary was 15. And I think he was probably about 12 when he bought this bike. Gary progressed from passenger to rider quickly and became European champion in 1992 riding with Mark Jackson. Events, however, were to conspire to make him consider a sabbatical. We've been involved in quite a big accident on uh, one of the autobahns in Germany, which is an awful lot of damage to my motorhome and to the trailer, my transporter. Uh, so I was already wondering how I was going to go on to the next year. Uh, on top of that, my engine was out of date and worn out. My chassis was out of date and worn out. Uh, one of my good friends had been killed that season at Hockenheim in the sidecar race, which had made me step back a bit and think quite seriously. Um, my business was going downhill because I was spending all my time working on engines and chassis. Uh, on top of all that, my wife had just given birth to twins. I wasn't really enjoying it anymore, so I thought now, now is the time to stop. So I stopped. I didn't ever intend going back anywhere near a sidecar, ever ever again really, but of course I was overlooking the wishes of Dan, who at the time I think was uh, four or five uh, and here we are back there again never ever thought I'd be back at world championship level never thought I'd be back at a club race even but uh, that's just the way things work out sometimes I guess well I was actually solo racing at the time and um, uh, we used to watch the sidecars when I wasn't out and um, it looked a lot more fun not to mention a fairly large and spectacular crash you had at Mallory Park yeah well, I think that was quite influencing wasn't it yeah Suddenly sidecars look fairly safe. Their first year of competition saw the Redline Superbikes team crowned Euro Cup champions, a feat all the more impressive as Dan was only 16, the youngest ever contender. can't really believe that it was true, but apparently it was. Um, we did fairly well, I think, didn't we? Straight away when Dan got on a sidecar, he'd never even sat on one at all before. Um, he leapt on and off we went and within a few laps 
I didn't even know he was there. No, that's never happened to me with any other passenger, even experienced passengers. Um, so something was working very, very well. Gary is an engineer and Dan is following in his footsteps. But having graduated from being a student, he's now finding it difficult to balance work and racing. In fact, for 2007, they've had to commit to just one series, putting their world championship dreams on hold. And it was just getting a little bit too difficult, really, to be doing the world championship and the British championship. We decided to do one or the other, um, and the British championship looked to us to be a good series to do. So that was the one that we're going for for this year. Hopefully we'll be back in Superside next year, if Dan can get the time off work. It's a situation that's become all too common in recent years. I think before is, is better, the family is better. The era, the young era is this season race, next season stopped. Next season is a young guy, is a new guy. Next season is forever, is the next guy. Change with the driver all the, this before is a long time to say. Even double world champion Tristan Reeves has decided to take time out from the sport that he loves. It's sad that Tris had to uh, step away, but unfortunately due to the work commitments and the fact that he's just a little baby, it's, uh, yeah, he's had to uh, put them first rather than, than, than his hobbies. It seems even world champions must have a day job. There's no money in the sport because it's low profile in the media means sponsors are hard to find. And it's not just in Britain. In Switzerland is, is the popular. The problem is the money. The life, the world is the money. And uh, the money for a race in the television is 100,000 euro. And the golf and football and ice hockey, tennis, all this pay for the television. And the sidecar people have not money for this 100,000 for 30 minutes in the television. When we had the World Championship up there last year, it was good coverage, but uh, this year they, won't, they don't send anything. They have to compete with other sports, and uh, so it's difficult. And we have to understand that we're such a small class, so it's difficult for them to promote sidecar in television, so it's, I think that's the reason. That up front now, the battle's on. Will Smith closing right on the back of Vince Biggs. Obviously, you've been a rider and now you're a commentator. I assume you still prefer the, uh, the riding. Yeah, I'd much rather be out there on a sidecar because it's a fantastic sport and really extreme. But uh, unfortunately, the money's not around at the moment. I was fortunate enough to get a job on the TV production side of it with the commentary and everything. So it keeps me involved in it. And uh, yeah, it's great to be around still. But yeah, much rather be out there. Because I mean, there's, there's, not, there's not really much out there in the way of, of media coverage. So you were very lucky to get that job. Why do you think that there's, there's so little, really, considering Steve Webb's a 10 time world champion? Well, I think a lot of it is down to the way that uh, all sports are run these days. They're run very much as big businesses and there's a lot of involvement, particularly in motorsport, from the manufacturers ensuring that they get the best TV coverage. So if no coverage equals no money, how are young people getting into sidecar racing? Well, at the moment, I wouldn't have said there is many young people coming into it. I think that's possibly one of the problems it has got. There's not, a, not enough youngsters coming into it. It seems family influence is the key. I grew up with it. Um, my dad started racing when I was only three. It's like 40 years ago now. So, uh, part of the family, you know. A sidecar in my life. My, my father driving sidecar. Just the fact that we've been brought up with it, unfortunately. We, yeah, it is unfortunate. I mean, if I could go back in time now, there's no way that I would have taken up sidecar racing, unfortunately. I would have, I would have gone solo racing without a doubt. The future seems uncertain as to how long riders can continue to fund their extraordinary hobby. But as long as it continues, there will still be heart-stopping spectacular racing and many more exciting characters. I don't fall out. We've already been through this today.